changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with some new favorites for you from Chicken Soup for the Soul, a book of Christmas miracles. We've only got a few more days till Christmas and we've just ended Hanukkah, but it's not too late to do something that will make you feel really good. And that is to add a little more giving to your Christmas plans by doing something for a stranger. And this is something that you can do alone or as a family. And I've got two examples for you today. The first story is by Bob White, and it's about what happened when he was doing his shift as a ticket counter supervisor for an airline at Stapleton International Airport in Denver, Colorado, on one Christmas Eve. He was actually looking forward to his shift ending because he wanted to go home and open gifts with his wife on Christmas Eve, which was their traditional time to do that. But suddenly, a very frantic and worried man approached Bob and said he needed to get home to Cheyenne, Wyoming. He had just come in from Philadelphia, and he had missed his connecting flight. And he said it was really, really important for him to be in Cheyenne for Christmas. So Bob directed him to the various ground transportation options, you know, the bus, rental cars, limo services. But 15 minutes later, the man came back and he said that all the buses were full. There were no rental cars. There was no way for him to get to Cheyenne, Wyoming. So Bob said, well, I'll get you a hotel room for the night and um, I'm going to put you on the first flight to Cheyenne in the morning. But when he suggested that, this man burst into tears. And then he explained that his son was only 17 and he was dying. He had spina bifida. He was not expected to live another year. He weighed 40 pounds. And this was very likely to be his last Christmas. And this man wanted to be home on Christmas Eve so that he would be there to greet his son when he woke up on Christmas morning. Bob called around himself then because he wanted to see if he could find anything for this man. But there really was nothing available. There was no way to get to Cheyenne, Wyoming. So he did what he felt was the only thing he could do. He offered to drive this man, whose name was Tom, to Cheyenne himself. So Bob called his wife, and he told her he was driving to Cheyenne and that he would explain everything in the morning, but something had come up that was more important than them following their tradition of exchanging their gifts on Christmas Eve. So Bob and Tom set off, and they arrived at that airport in Cheyenne, Wyoming, around 2.30 in the morning, and Bob left Tom there to wait for his wife, who was coming to pick him up, and Bob drove back home. And when he got home, he discovered that his wife had waited up for him and they opened their gifts and they talked about Tom and they imagined what it would be like for his family on their last Christmas with their son. A couple of days later, Bob received a Christmas card with a picture of Tom and his family. And Bob says, and I quote, Tom thanked me for the special gift he had received that holiday season. But I knew the best gift was mine. So that story that Bob White told us happened almost 30 years ago, but it ended up being one of his best Christmas memories ever. And now I'm going to share another story with you by Ellie Braun Haley, who made special memories with her granddaughter also by giving to others at Christmas time. In Ellie's case, it was four days before Christmas, and it was the last day for putting together gifts at the Angel Project, which is an annual event in Calgary in Canada. This was the day that families in need could pick up their food hampers and their toys. And everything they were picking up had been donated through the generosity of strangers. And the project also needed volunteers to help hand out the food and gifts to those people and also to drive food and gifts to people who couldn't come to do the pickup. So Ellie and her granddaughter stood in a long line of volunteers waiting to go inside this huge, cold, barn-like building where all of the goodies were being assembled. And as they peered inside while they were waiting in line, they saw volunteers putting frozen turkeys into bags in one line, and in another line they saw people picking up milk that had been donated for them. And there was a long line of cars and trucks waiting to enter the parking lot, and these were people who were picking up the donated goods. No one was honking or acting at all impatient, 
Ellie said it all seemed a bit surreal, as if they were in a parallel universe. Finally, the line she was in, the line of volunteers, advanced, and Ellie could see more of what was going on inside the building. And she wrote that she started tearing up because she saw hundreds of boxes filled with food or toys. And she realized how much time and money had gone into this effort and how much care the community was showing for the people who were going through some tough times. When she and her granddaughter finally got to the front of the line, she says it was so overwhelming to be surrounded by so much need and so much giving. And she says, I felt very privileged to be there and be part of it all. So her assignment was to pack her car with food and toys for two different families and go ahead and deliver those things. She says it was an extraordinary experience, and she was simply not prepared for the emotional greeting they received when they arrived at the first drop-off place. A woman opened the door, and as soon as she realized who they were, she started screaming to her neighbors, They're here, they're here, the angel people are here. And she didn't even stop to put on shoes. She ran out to their car in the snow with only socks on her feet, and she helped them remove the boxes from the car and bring them in. And Ellie tried to explain to her that they were just the delivery people. They weren't the people who had contributed all of this great stuff. But the woman just kept thanking her and thanking her. At the second house where they delivered, there were young children, and the mom sent those kids upstairs so they wouldn't see what was being unloaded. And then Ellie's granddaughter carried in teddy bears and a huge craft set and two other toys, all of which had been specifically chosen by the Angel Project volunteers for these children. And they also brought in boxes and boxes of food. Ellie said she just felt a giant surge of emotion as she pictured those children on Christmas morning opening those gifts that had been chosen for them by strangers. And she concludes her story by saying, Though we were the delivery people that day, I drove away feeling as though I was the one who had received the gift. So thanks for joining us today for the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast. I'm Amy Newmark. You can follow me on Twitter at Amy Newmark. You'll get daily links to the podcast, as well as news on our Chicken Soup for the Soul books on writing opportunities for us. You'll get updates on our business. You'll get updates on the world of publishing. Come back Friday as we start talking about what happens after Christmas when you're looking ahead to the new year and you're thinking about what you want to do differently. I'm going to introduce you to Nick Walker, who agreed to step outside his comfort zone one day at work. He took a big risk, made a big change in his life, and he has now spent decades working as a very successful TV weatherman who you see on The Weather Channel. 